Hey everyone, Token Dave over here, the dorky talking black guy that's just trying to get by. And welcome to another edition of Street Fighter Flashbacks. In celebration of 30 year anniversary of Street Fighter, I'm taking it upon myself to share my memories of the arcade game and the console games at that period of time, and as well as give my reviews of other Street Fighter related media. We all knew it would be a matter of time before Street Fighter would be adapted into a full length movie. Everybody saw that coming. What people, mainly of Western countries, did not expect was a full length animated movie, which is what I am talking about in this review of the Street Fighter flashbacks. So today I am going to be reviewing, giving my review of Street Fighter 2, the anime, or in, in Western countries known as the animated movie. So, after defeating Sagat, the Emperor of Muay Thai, Dieu, a karate practitioner, becomes the most recently talked about martial artist and is considered a new legendary fighter. This is mainly due to the fact that after the fight, Dieu seemingly disappeared, but in all actuality, he is constantly traveling the world, making it difficult for anyone to contact him or find him. Even someone with the extensive resources as Vega, the ruthless leader of the criminal organization known as Shadowloo, cannot find Dieu. Vega is recruiting and kidnapping fighters from all over the world to fortify a syndicate and assassinate potential threats. These threats range from other underworld rivals and global politicians. Shadowloo's activities gain the attention of Interpol, the international police organization whom appoint Agent Chun Li to lead an operation against Shadowloo. Chun Li expands the operation by joining forces with Major Guile of the United States Air Force to increase the odds of them taking down Shadowloo and Vega. Now guys, I'll be frank with you. I actually saw this adaptation and this rendition of the of, of Street Fighter movie before the Van Damme one. This is mainly because my uncle at the time was very much into Japanese anime and was gaining more of an appreciation of the Japanese culture. Hence, you know, one of the many things of my childhood that I didn't take advantage of was the fact that he had me watch the um, Heisei Godzilla movies that were coming out in real time, which I will talk about in the future, you know. But he also actually brought over a lot of other anime, but it wasn't until this animated movie came out that he brought over to me, and, like, my jaw dropped the moment I saw Sagat roundhouse kick Dew and Dew blocking that kick, because, oh my god, they... They gained the scope, the hugeness, and the magnitude of the actual game and of the of the yeah of the video game in that very first moment. You know, the animation was done very well and still to this day highly holds up. And when I also saw Dew deliver the Shoryuken to Sagat basically giving him the scar and like you know seeing the blood spew out of his chest i was like sold done there is no way this movie would not be awesome and i was right because as the movie progressed things got cooler and cooler and cooler you know next scene we see cammy assassinate you know uh what you would call him a, a um the english prime minister with the most epic freaking neck breaker I've ever seen, all right? In addition, you know, you actually got that this was not just a Japanese anime. They got most of basically, you know, they got most of the characteristics of various parts of the world down to a T. I say mostly because, you know, there is a particular scene where they say that one of um, Vega's henchmen is actually apprehended and gets the death penalty. The problem is 
This occurs in New York, and this animated movie came out in 1994. Yeah, New York did not have a death penalty at that period. So, you know, that's a, that's a complaint that I'll admit. And by the way, the, I always said the animation was epic, but not only was the animation really good, and like I said, so holds up to this day, they really, really, like, basically gave detail in the movements with, like, you know, the punches, the kicks, the blocks, and the martial arts techniques. Two ways that I haven't seen enough of, you know, in more recent anime from what I've heard and everything. And also, you know, I've also liked how the characters were, like, you know, not all characters were given, like, you know, extensive backstories and story arcs because, well, let's face it, we are dealing with we're dealing with like uh da, 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 da. not twelve. We're dealing with about seventeen characters. Wait, hold on. The original four, then the additional four with the masters, then the additional four, and then yeah, seventeen characters. Because everybody from Super Street Fighter to Turbo is in this movie. You know, yes, you see everybody. You see a lot of Dew. You see some of Ken. You see a lot of Chun Li. You see a lot of Guile. You see a lot of Vega. You'll see a bit of Balrog, you see some of M. Bison, and you see a little bit of Sagat. We also get, like, you know, an epic fight scene with both uh, Dew and Fei Long, and we get um, the awesomeness of Dew and Ken taking on Vega, as well as we see basically, you know, DJ getting down with his own fight scene, and we see which is my favorite fight scene of the whole edit, of the whole movie, Chun Li versus Balrog, and oh my God, like you know, they actually like you know really highlighted some of like you know the <coughs> extreme movements that some video games and animes are known for. But the movements itself, while basically. You know, I'm not gonna lie. They are exaggerated a little bit, and they they re they verge on the realm of fantasy. So I'll say fantastical and everything, because there's a lot of fantasy elements within the Street Fighter lore. They find a way to ground things as well too. So while things might seem unrealistic, it's still grounded in a level of reality. So they don't go way over the top, which is awesome, and. The music, not only the musical score, but the soundtrack, the Japanese, both the Japanese soundtrack and the American, the American cut soundtrack is awesome. While I prefer the Japanese soundtrack, I will admit that like hearing some of the grunge bands of the 90s and some of those songs, they were pretty cool, particularly like as much as I like the Japanese music, uh, the Japanese th song Cry, uh, when Chun Li went against Balrog. I have to admit, the give it to me and everything in the American cut, that was a much better fit and everything. And that was um, that was epic and all. So, you know, are there any complaints? Yeah, I got a couple. Like, once again, you know, Ken gets underutilized and everything. Though it was nice seeing him give T-Hawk the, uh, the dragon punch, you know. Uh, I really hate the fact that basically... They got, even though DJ is in here, he only has one cameo. The black character, M. Bison, you know, the one that has the most scenes of any black character, you know, he is the one that is, like, basically, like, overseeing a cocaine deal. Come on, Japan. Really? Really? And you're trying to say that M. Bison and Mike from Street Fighter 1 are not the same character? Huh. <laughs> yeah, right. Go fig, you know. And like I said, like you know, I'm a little upset that they got the fact of the New York death penalty that they that they stated. And I'm like, New York didn't have a death penalty at that time. But those are. But compared to those complaints, awesome animation, epic fight scenes, seeing these seeing these moves pulled off in such an awesome way, excellent music, excellent feeling, excellent atmosphere, guys. The Street Fighter 2 anime is amaze balls. Agree? Disagree? Drop me a comment below. Give me a like. Subscribe. 
You can follow me on Twitter and on Facebook, which is the link is below, and ring that bell so you know when a new video loads. But until then, this has been Token Dave, the dorky token black guy who's just trying to get by, and I'll catch you guys later.